All right, with us now is Shahar Gal, CEO of General Robotics, which develops and provides advanced robotic systems for saving and protecting special forces. Before we hear more from him, let's watch a short presentation. Shahar, welcome to the studio. Thank you for joining me today. My pleasure. So, uh, what was the background for establishing General Robotics? General Robotics is a family company. It was established by my father. Wow. He was a colonel at the Ministry of Defense, and he was one of the people responsible for the R&D of the State of Israel for many years. Uh, meanwhile, I have a brother-in-law, and he is an Israeli Navy SEAL. So he participated in many operations. And in one of the operations, him and his team were ambushed. And he was severely injured. He has friends that are still handicapped and friends that were killed. So after that happened, my father decided to open a company that will make systems that can save lives of special forces. And this is how General Robotics was born. Now, if we go fast forward 10 years to today, today our systems are operational in more than a dozen countries. They're being used by more than 30 special forces worldwide, including at the unit where my brother-in-law served. Definitely a very important cause. Um, and what Thank is you. the company's core technology that it's based off of? When we started, we were thinking, how can we help special forces the most? And how can we be most beneficial? We saw that they're already very highly trained and they're very well equipped. But what many times they lack is situational awareness. And situational awareness is means understanding in real time what's happening from within the danger zone. So we decided to focus on that and to do technology that will bring that situational awareness for them. I'll give you an example, sometimes just information that seems trivial. For example, where is the terrorist? How does that environment look like? Are there neutral people nearby that we mustn't hurt? Where are other friendly forces that we need to take into consideration? That information is many times not available before they engage. So we decided to, to make technology that will provide that information. And they, the way we did it, we've developed our core IP is electronics. We call it it's the robotics brain. And the reason we call it robotics brain because we connect it to many video cameras, so that's the eyes of the robot. We attached many microphones to it, so that's the ears of the robot. And we put on top of that an artificial intelligence layer. And when we have that, what we do is we put it into different kinds of robots. We put it into small, medium, and large robots. We also have RCWS systems that we can put on any unmanned vehicle. And we send these systems into the most dangerous areas. 
And these systems transmit information real time of what's going on, so the special forces see it, and they see it as if they are there, as if they are there at the danger zone. And now when they have all that information, they, are, they know what to expect when they decide to engage. So, and we also give them a capability to engage remotely. So this increases probability for mission success and decreases probability for injuries, friendly fire, and of course for casualties. So once inside of that danger zone, what exactly is the role that robots play on the battlefield? I think that now we're at very exciting time with respect to robotics because we have now robots, they're coming like waves, at different applications that they weren't there before. We're not allowed to say all the, what we're doing with special forces, but we have here some pictures in the background that are allowed to release. And you see now robots that are being used indoors for anti-terror and crime, for example. You can see robots that are being used for, this is classic battlefield protection and cover fire. We can see robots that are being used for automatic border protection, for uh, underground and tunnel warfare. So, so many different applications are happening right now with the special forces. And I think what's exciting about it, we're not just activating robots with the special forces. What we're doing, we're building with them together the concept of operation, how to do it effectively, how to do it in a way that will save lives the most. And what we're doing today with these special forces is what all armies and law enforcement agencies are going to adopt just a few years from now. Very interesting. Thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure. All Thank right, you. I want to bring the conversation over back to you, Amos Gilad. How are you doing over there? Thank you. I wanted to know if you had any comments about the presentation that you just watched. Fascinating. It reflects the vision of uh, <clears throat> the chief of staff today, General, uh, Lieutenant General Kochav, that uh, keeps speaking and talking and preaching to modernize the armed forces for future uh, warfare, including all these technologies. It, it looks like uh, James Bond, but not in movie, in reality. Thank you. Absolutely.